डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब आंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी हेलो एवरीवन, आई एम डॉक्टर रूमा पॉ वेलकम यू ऑल टू चैतन्य स्टूडियो ऑफ डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब अंबेडकर ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी अहमदाबाद वी आर डीलिंग विद लेक्चर सीरीज ऑफ पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट डिप्लोमा इन ह्यूमन रिसोर्स इन द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ इंटरनेशनल ह्यूमन रिसोर्स मैनेजमेंट स्टूडेंट्स इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैव कम टू नो द डिफिनेशन ऑफ आई एच आर एम वी हैव कम टू नो द फीचर्स वी हैव कम टू नो द प्रॉस द कॉन्स इवन वी हैव कम टू नो द different types of international organization we have also come across uh, uh, the quality measurement even we have come across how to measure the quality over there right so in today's lecture we will focus on block 2 which is all about the organization and the practices hr practices in international human resource management so let's start with the earning objectives so after learning this unit you will be able to understand the relationship between hr policies and organizational strategy and why international assignments are needed uh, types of international assignments and the difference between expatriates and the local employees okay so the first thing that we need to know the dynamic business environment has made it essential you know for companies to expand global The advent of information technology has made business operations effortless and convenient. Companies therefore continuously strive to expand their business across border. International assignments play a significant role in expanding business operations. The expatriates get an opportunity for networking and socializing. that helps in creating a brand image for the company at higher levels the companies in international organization uh, this company's strategies the planning are also related to such foreign assignments as various changes may be brought about in the organization even the companies over there so the process you know the process the culture you know uh, and while business planning company considers different types of international assignments that should be deputed to employee this choice is based on factors like cost like availability of talent like political and legal factors so companies choose between relocating employees to another location and arranging periodic trips so there are different types of work assignments best non companies and the organizational in you know, organization policies this organizational policies over there uh, related with centralization and decentralization as well of control and decision making so this unit will discuss at length the various considerations and approaches for hiring people you know for international assignments so we need to first thing that we need to know link international assignments with organization strategy so the process of expansion of business in foreign countries is usually in forms of subsidiary companies usually an organization looks towards creating goodwill for the brand and earn profits through the internationalization right so in the previous chapters we had discussed the importance of human resource in establishing a brand or a, or a company's you know or a company's uh, uh, in a, in a market right even the company structure and process in foreign land so many times the company sends you know uh, the agents to their subsidiary units so that the organizational strategies norms can be aligned in the new culture and this international assignments 
can be are you know the, this international assignments are projects involving special tasks and responsibilities to be fulfilled in the foreign country so through international assignments a company is able to develop a pool of global managers who can help in formulating you know business strategies so based on market demands so as we discussed uh, in the previous unit this control is an essential factor right so those international assignments also helps in coordinating and controlling environmental forces that have direct effect on the success of an international organization so sending employees and managers is an expensive arrangement and cost almost double or triple so the cost in home country so moreover there are chances of um, you know the reputation of employees if they are unable to adjust in the new surroundings so around 10 to 20% of the employees come back before the end of the contract and those who stay sometimes fail to perform as per expectations of their supervisors international managers are therefore a competitive resources to the multinational that need to be managed continuously so this value created by international assignments completely depends on their management right so the hr managers therefore need to develop various strategies for management of international assignments so today the hr department is considered as the strategic partner of a company of a firm of a organization so this is because they have the capability of aligning individual goals with business objectives so coca cola ibm Uh, have hr departments that formulate and implement hr policies in their headquarters at home office so the responsibilities include selection training and transferring the parent company so the personal you know the personal abroad and formulating hr policies for the form as a whole for its foreign operations so moving forward to next that we need to know that is reasons for international assignments so there are three reasons that we can see so we start with the first reason that is filing the vacant position right when companies identify a skill gap they prefer to send employees with prior knowledge and expertise on the required knowledge so in case of short term projects or job short term projects or job so companies prefer to send expatriates rather than recruiting h hcns so more cost is also one reason for sending expatriates especially in case of european countries where the local labor cost is comparatively highly or the higher so international assignments also arise when a company plans to launch new projects so since this requires employees with prior experience of handling similar assignments so sending experts in a right decision in the early days of globalization staff unavailability was a prime concern but this problem is now getting solved right so moving forward to the next that is management development so globalization has changed the role of employees in business strategy so today managers and senior executives are recruited as business partners as they are capable of driving the organization to development so this fact is of significance in international assignments so the mnc's uh, follow various practices to develop its human resource this include transfers from headquarters to subsidiaries for different periods the staffs selected for such transfers feel motivated 
as they find opportunities for career development and explore new opportunities. So now moving forward to the next that is organizational development. So sending PCNs to foreign subsidiaries help in a you know the first one that was establishing control. The next that is explore new opportunities. The transfer of a knowledge and the third one or the fourth one that is raising competences. Now moving forward to the next that is we need to know types of international assignments. So the parent company parent company nationals are assigned with different types of international assignments that vary in durations and roles and responsibilities so so uh, we need to know the various categories that international assignments is you know uh, what are the types right so the first that we need to know that is you know the long term assignments or expatriation right so expatriation is an assignment that ranges between two to five years and involves relocating the employee along with the family to the host country. So these long-term assignments have their own drawbacks, you know, like high cost, like dual career uh, couples, then an unwillingness, right? So, uh, so the, the employees to go to less attractive locations. Long-term assignments are usually helpful in case of establishing control system transfer of knowledge and expertise and another more important that is management development now moving forward to the next that is short term assignments so these are usually for a period of 1 to 12 months uh, and these are the features of short term assignments that we need to know that employees are paid mobility bonus that performance management is done in coordination of both parent company and the subsidiary. And another more important that is taxation and compensation are complicated. So employees face stress due to uh, you know irregularities and uh, you know fulfilling personal responsibilities. So short term assignments have two more variations. The first one that is international commuters or the uh, commuters international commuters and the second one that is frequent flyers now moving forward to next that is global managers so these employees are well versed you know in international operations and spend their time on expatriation uh, for a lifetime so though their careers are managed from the headquarters they keep moving at different locations so global managers are motivated by the international lifestyle and are capable of adjusting in different cultures. So these managers have very good communication skills and usually know more than two languages other than, you know, other than their native and have an open mindset. Now moving forward to the next that is international junior managers. So, these international juniors managers are freshly recruited executives at trainee position and are sent on international assignments for grooming and development uh, purposes. So, the basis of their selection for such assignment is solely their potential and capability to handle the global environment and cultures over there. So, thus, International assignments can be characterized on the basis of its duration, the level of employee and purpose of assignments. So different types of assignments have different contracts based on the scope of responsibilities on the headquarters. The scope is defined by various political and industrial policies of host and home countries right now moving forward to the next topic that is rules of fan expatriates so here we can see the rules so employees sent to the host country have different rules and responsibility so although their costs are comparatively higher so they play significant role in internationalization of businesses so we can see the you know the six roles i have cited the six roles Right, the first one we we will start with the agent of specialization so what it is so expatriates 
and short better understanding of culture among the employees of two countries and so they are often termed as bumblebees so as they transfer corporate values so due to the knowledge of the organization and its culture they are able to spread common work culture and shared values so expat you know this expatriates encourage competency sharing and are also exposed to different view points that enhance uh, their competencies and perspectives now moving forward to the next that is agent of direct control now this is uh, like uh, expatriates are basically peaceness they are usually full they you know establishing control over the culture norms and policies in the subsidiary unit so germany for example is a country that practices this so the expats are called as bios due to their dominant nature so tr staff transfers are a bureaucratic mechanism of control and reflect and ethno you know ethnocentric ethnocentric tendency moving forward to the next that is network builder so as we discussed uh, that socialization is a one of the roles of expats uh, therefore they tend to create a web of networks with the essence government officials so with their good networking skills this people create a circle of contacts from different departments so they are also called as spiders an important aspect of this role is its personal ability so the creation of contacts and maintaining them solely depends on an individual expat and may not you know may not be transferred so this poses a threat that once the expat has returned the contacts may not be of any use so for instance mary an american national visited china for international assignments uh, and during her course of stay she develops good relation with asians so key officials of host country uh, clients and uh, subsidiary staff so on her completion you know on her completion of stay she was replaced by uh, um, you know the asia from uk and so in this case it is not a certain that the contacts created by mary will also and you know all also uh, entertain you know asia in similar way so this is a shortcoming of this role now moving forward to the next that is language you know so having spent a long time in foreign country expats tends to learn their language also so this becomes their strength once they return to their parent country so their understanding of the foreign language makes them a preferred choice for international communication so they are being referred for any type of queries explanation right so this you know uh, this is a host country so since they become the communication medium between local and foreign executives so they are also called as node now moving forward to the next that is boundary spanner so this refers to uh, you know this refers is boundary spanner refers to an activity like gathering information that breeds the internal and external organization context so expats can collect host country information acts as a representatives of their forms in the host country and influence agents for example while while attending a social function at the foreign embassy expats have an opportunity to socialize and gather market um, socialize and gather market uh, information that can be further used to promote a firm at higher levels moving forward to the next that is mode of transferring competence and capability so transfers of the skills and competencies uh, from one company to a subsidiary or the vice versa can be done through expatriates so their sharp knowledge of parent country culture and strategic objectives helps in guiding the hcns they are able to acquire the competencies needed uh, to fulfill the organizational goals now moving on to the next the role of uh, 
that we need to know the role of non expatriates right so no non expatriates are people who travel to another countries frequently on international assignments uh, but do not relocate so they are often called as globe trotters frequent flyers or road warriors so their responsibility include first one that is a sales and marketing second one that is represent company uh, during trade fairs negotiation deals uh, then renewal of contracts and then next that is interact face to face with clients distributors and others stakeholders so since uh, these people are constantly traveling you know tra they are constantly traveling their management has to be done differently so their job is considered a part of their normal duties and traveling abroad does not get them treated you know treated differently so such employees also reflect signs of stress so the reasons of stress are it it may, it, it may be the health concerns it may be the personal issues like home and family it could be the role conflicts it could be the host culture you know host culture issues it could be the travel logistics like flight timings accommodations right so now moving forward to the next that is the role of ihrm functions so globalization has raised the standard of hr department from general people uh, so uh, you know this management to providing critical partnership in achieving organizational objectives achieving organizational goals or the mission the vision so the role of ihrm in international assignments varies on the basis of organizational structure as we had discussed organizations generally have centralized or decentralized structures so thus the hr role is also based on this so now we will see the centralized hr companies so the key role of hrm is centralized companies is to manage all high grade management positions uh, positions in worldwide which involve or the involving activities like identifying global workforce with required skills then planning international assignments and performance uh, you know and performance management now moving forward to the next that is decentralized hr companies so in this the key role is to manage and you know the allied corporate managers so the key activity is to influence operating units to support international assignments so the transition hr companies here the hr is responsible for the career development of the expatriates as well as the senior managers so for for this you know they work on persuading you know divisional managers and pursue strategic staffing so corporate hr therefore should redefine their bureaucratic administration culture and become influencers over area of subsidiary practices so an important role is to provide uninterrupted supply of skilled manpower at the global locations so this requires deep planning you know this requires a in depth planning a strategy and understanding of each locations so hr managers should play the role of influencers to organizational culture they can substantially help in synchronizing the work and outlook of employees at different locations so for this extensive training program extensive training program and development opportunities have to be created for local and expats and hr can act as career leaders the career ladders for employees by creative job design and providing ample opportunities so hr in global companies you know should the first one that is design literally integrated uh, compensation and performance management system the second one that is enhanced homogeneity the third one that is attractive global teams with requisite skills the fourth one that is managing cultural diversity by appreciating different you know the differing perspectives and ideas uh, that individuals bring 
to the workplace. So the diversity is also regarded as an uh, invaluable contributor to innovation and the problem solving success. So the first one which is very important the specialization in outsourcing in sourcing of you know the shoring. Second one business partner uh, developing an effective international workforce is much more uh, difficult for a competitors uh, to emulate that buying technology or securing capital. So you know so uh, this you know uh, even uh, this human resource management uh, this uh, human resource management uh, when it comes to this uh, functions the human resource management how well companies manage their HR around the world can mean the difference between success and failure. So in, in, in a nutshell, uh, firms that effectively manage their international HR typically outperform competitors in terms of identifying new international business opportunities, adapting to changing uh, you know, conditions uh, worldwide. So sharing innovation then um, sharing knowledge then share uh, sharing knowledge throughout the firm so effectively coordinating subsidiary uh, operations so the conducting successful cross border acquisitions and maintaining a high performing committed overseas workforce so when organizations enable develop you know develop and motivate human capital they improve accounting profits as well as shareholders value in the process right so we have come to know this the role so there is a major role of ihrm functions that is the centralized hr companies how they are working and the decentralized hr companies how they are working now this is a check check your progress which you can do at your home so this is like a homework for you to check your progress if you if you would like to know more about this topic you can go through this books so here i'm concluding this session right so a quick recap to the session we you know in this lecture we have come to know the reasons behind the international assignments right the types of international assignments also we have come to know in the last lecture even we have come to know the inter, in the centralized and the decentralized non expatriates right and the features of expatriates Right. So in the last lecture, we'll come to know the practices, the, the international human resource practices, the good practices of human resource, how, how to plan in international base that we will come to know in the next lecture. Thank you. Thank you all.